Hey, I've been writing since 1987, so it's been a while. I actually got started because my then manager said, Borchard, your reports are lousy. I'm tired of putting red ink all over your lab reports. And I was really upset. I'd always gotten A's in English, so I sat down and figured out my problem. It was that I wasn't communicating with the audience he felt I should be communicating with, with business managers, with sales guys, with plant people that might be commercializing processes or products I was working on. Instead, I was writing for other researchers. So I got straightened out on that, but that actually got me interested in the whole process of writing. I, I enjoyed it in high school and college, and I started writing articles for magazines at that point, around 1987. And since then, I branched out, and I do a lot of corporate writing for companies, uh, writing their research reports, editing research reports written by engineers from other countries uh, because English is a second language for them. I also do a lot of what's called knowledge retention, knowledge management work. Uh, where I interview employees I'm leaving the company or being promoted, or retiring, whatever, try to capture the soft skills and the soft knowledge that isn't captured in their lab reports and document that. That gives whoever takes over their work a head start in getting going. My experience in lab functions dates back about 35 years now. I've worked in laboratories for four different companies, three large ones, Hercules, Halliburton Services, and both Shell Oil and Shell Chemical. I've also worked for a small company, Toma Products. I've done a lot of work related to the paper industry, so I've seen a lot of different perspectives on laboratory management, on doing technical service work for customers, and turning ideas into new money-making products. When I'm not writing, I do a lot of reading. Business books, because they give me ideas for new articles for my writing, and history books. And I also bicycle quite a bit, and uh, uh, I, I've uh, given up uh, most of my other activities because I really, really enjoy writing. I think it's important to write about rebuilding high-performance work teams because that's a very common problem facing lab managers today. There's been a lot of staff reductions in connection with the current recession and drop in business making companies need to cut expenses. There's also been a lot of mergers, particularly in the pharmaceutical industry, that has involved R&D staff reductions. And after those occur, lab managers have to figure out how to put the pieces back together. So there's a lot of managers wrestling with the issue of how to rebuild work teams. And of course, the most important ones to rebuild are the really high performance teams that have been putting out the new products and providing the excellent technical service that wins companies new business. Effective team building requires understanding the emotions of your team members as well as your own emotions as a manager or team leader and you may have new members on the team who you don't know very well. And you've got to begin to understand what are their driving forces, what makes them want to be high performers so that the whole team overall uh, is doing what it's supposed to do, accomplishing its mission. You have to understand the various forces driving each team member's behavior and they don't have just one, they'll have several with some being more important for one individual than another. Building new teams is not new to many industries or to many lab managers. However, what is new for many lab managers is rebuilding teams in the context of staff reductions having occurred. 
and all the associated uh, emotional problems that people have and uncertainties that they have after staff reductions where they walk around thinking who's next. Reorganizing a high performance work team after staff reductions is an emotional process as well as a practical one. The practical issues are probably easier to solve. They're the issues associated with putting together the right people having the right skill sets on the team. The emotional issues are motivating people in a climate after a staff reduction that's inherently demotivating. Strong leadership on the part of both lab managers and the team leaders is really essential, never more so than after a staff reduction because Staff members are looking for guidance, they're looking for direction, they're looking for leadership. I think it's uh, unfortunate that many lab managers are not more effective leaders and it starts back in school. Our college education and if you go to graduate school, graduate school education really does not prepare people to be leaders in a work environment. Oftentimes, interestingly, extracurricular activities help do that. And it's a good idea for hiring managers when looking at job candidates to look at people's extracurricular activities and see what leadership roles they have assumed in those. In terms of training current managers, there are a lot of people out there offering workshops and short courses to develop a manager's leadership skills. I think many of these courses are less effective than they might be because they are generalized. For instance, I think it would really improve a course to provide examples illustrating various important points, providing those examples out of the laboratory work environment rather than out of the general business work environment as nearly all seem to do.